I designed this combination belt and disc sander in SketchUp to be made mostly out of plywood with some metal parts like shafts and bearings. It's going to use a 3 quarter horsepower furnace motor. There's quite a few parts, so let's get started. For the base of the sander, I'm just going to use this piece of 3 quarter inch plywood. The motor I'm going to use for this sander is this 3 quarter horsepower furnace motor, and I already went ahead and made a mount for it using some 3 quarter inch plywood. Just trace the motor out onto these end pieces and then it's held on with two of these hose clamps. The next thing I'm going to build is the main wall that goes through the center and then the supports that will support the main drive shaft and bearings. Throughout the build I'm going to be using this crosscut sled. I don't have a table saw in my shop so this crosscut sled allows me to cut long length parts that I can't do on my miter box. It's a pretty simple build and makes uh, a lot of use out of that circular saw. These three pieces will be the support for the main drive shaft. All three of these pieces are going to have a bearing in them to support the shaft. So I'm going to clamp all three of these together and drill the hole for the bearings all at once so that I know that they line up perfectly. For this bearing, since I didn't drill all the way through, I made two small holes in case I ever wanted to push the bearing back out. I could insert uh, something into those holes and push the bearing out. This piece here is suspended off of the center wall and it's just held in place with a few supports here and I'll cut those next. Now that these two bearings are mounted, I'll slide the third one on here and mark its location on the board and attach it while it's on the shaft so that I know that all three of these are still aligned. The next thing I need is two pulleys, one on each of these shafts. I've already experimented uh, by turning some out of three quarter inch plywood. I need to make another one now for the shaft on the sander. I could just make another one like this, however the problem is this shaft is 5 8 of an inch and this shaft is only half an inch. So if I turn another one on the motor, it's going to be too sloppy and loose for to fit on this shaft. So what I'm thinking is I'll use one of my original test pulleys here that I have. Uh, I'll try to tape up the shaft uh, to make this pulley fit on there tight and then I'll cut out a third circle and put it on here and turn that one uh, right on the shaft to the right size so that it matches the smaller pulley which is going to go on the motor. At this point in the build I hadn't bought a new belt yet and I'd been stealing the belt off of my drill press so I was often having to do belt changes which got quite annoying. To keep the pulley on the shaft I'm just cutting a notch in the shaft with the Dremel and then inserting a nail to act as a key. I noticed there's quite a bit of vibration and the shaft wants to walk off the bearings. I put a brace on the backside to help stiffen it up and that seemed to help keep the shaft in place. 
I later figured out that the motor wasn't parallel with the drive shaft, and after fixing that, the vibrations went away. To attach the sanding disc to the shaft, I had this idea to make a hub out of black pipe, a flange, and a pipe adapter. This looked like it was going to work. I cut all the pieces and it fit it on the shaft quite well, but I overlooked the fact that the motor rotation was actually going to unthread the parts that I had threaded together, and so it just wanted to fall apart. So I bit the bullet and I bought a pulley off of eBay that fit the shaft, and this was a way better idea. While I was at it, I also bought a belt so I could leave my drill press alone. For the disc, I chose to use a piece of melamine particle board. The reason for this is that melamine coating is a nice surface for the self-adhesive discs to stick to, and it also makes it easy to replace the disc so you can peel off the adhesive and replace it with another one. Once I had the disc mounted, I used the sander like a lathe and then went ahead with a chisel to try to make that disc as round as possible. Since I had just cut it out with the jigsaw, it wasn't really perfectly round yet. To balance the disc, I put a short length of shaft into a bearing and then just pushed the disc around until it settled on a low spot and then marked that area and used a Forstner bit to drill out some of the material to try to balance the wheel as best as I could. Once it was running pretty good, I could slap on the self-adhesive disc, and then I started working on the shroud that will go around that disc. So somewhere along here I made a mistake. My front panel doesn't fit in here anymore. So I'm just going to cut a new one and put it on the face instead of in, in between the two edge pieces. The shaft has a tendency to drift out. So I'm adding washers on either side. Uh, this spacer, which is made out of a piece of oak, it's got a little spot for the head of the nail. Another washer. And then that will get captured by the back end of the disc shroud. To make the curved top piece of the shroud, I originally tried just bending a thin piece of hardboard around the curve, but it ended up cracking on me, so that didn't work. I then just went with sheet metal and that obviously works a lot better. For the disc sander platform I'm going to use another piece of melamine and these three quarter inch pieces of plywood for the sides. To allow the table to tilt, I'm going to fasten it with a piano hinge and I've taped it up here and I'm just going to go ahead and mark where each one of the holes are and then I'll take it off and put the screws on and then put it back together. That way it will line up perfectly. To keep the platform in place, I'm going to use a couple of knobs and a hole through here and a nut on the inside. Uh, my mistake from earlier left this gap open, which I'm going to need to fill because I need to drill a hole right through right about where that is. So I'm going to fill that and then put a hole and a slot through the side piece for uh, adjustment. While I'm waiting for the glue to dry on those pieces, I'm going to wrap this guard 
in this piece of vinyl that I have left over from an old project. And that will just uh, keep the edges from being sharp and also that way I don't have to paint it. I just can't win on these little pieces. Uh, after I glued them on there, I realized there needs to be a little bit of a notch for the table to sit in on there a little bit. So here I am fixing them once again. To mark where to cut the slot on the edge pieces, I just insert a drill bit through the nut and then spin the tabletop, which marks a line on the piece, and then I can drill that out on the drill press. The last thing to do on the table is to set it square and then add two little stop locks on either end of the table arms and that way there's a hard stop for 90 degrees. I also cut down the motor shaft since I've been avoiding it all this time until I knew exactly where to cut it. And lastly, I could hook up the dust collection to the shop vac and give it a shot. The dust collection is quite impressive. After sanding a few test pieces, there's only one speck of dust on the top of the shroud. I'm really happy with the way this has turned out so far. It's running really good, so that means I should keep going. Uh, the next step is to figure out how to put on this 6x48 inch sanding belt on here, but I think I'll save that for the next video.